And so you listen with your eyes and your posture and your expressions and your gesticulations and, and your heart. You listen with it all. But God listens with his heart to us. When David was so deeply impacted because of the oppression and the attack that he was getting against uh, by the Philistines, he cried his eyeballs out to God. He just cried. He was like, I'm here by myself. No, nobody understand me either. Everybody else being blessed, and I'm trying to go to church and pay my tithe. <laughs> and David's like, God, I'm doing everything that I know to serve you, and I'm still having a hard time. And I don't understand why everybody else is getting blessed except me. And God, I don't understand. I've been trying to do it. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> and this is what David was. But I want you to notice what David realized in Psalm 56 and verse 8. David said, you keep track of all my sorrows. He says, you have collected all my tears in your bottle. And he says, you have recorded each one in your book. When I say that God hears you and he sees you, God hears you and God sees you. He says, you keep track of all my sorrows. Don't think that you have a sorrow that God does not know about. Don't think that you have ever shed a tear and God was not aware of it. I'm talking about the tears that you shed behind closed doors when you got to be strong for your family and strong for your spouse and strong for your children and you can't let anybody else see you cry. But when you get by yourself, you got to cry. God says, I have collected your tears in a vial. I've got them in a bottle because when you hurt, I hurt. And he says, I've got a record of every tear that you have shed. I've recorded each one of your tears in my book. David knew this, that while I'm hurting and while I'm crying, God, it is not going unnoticed by you. Because God takes note of our prayers. God takes note of our sorrows. And God takes note of our tears. And I want you to notice here in Genesis chapter 21, verse 15 through 19, that God not only hears our cries, he hears the cries of our children. God hears the cries of our children. I know that God hears the cries of our children because, you know, my dad was a type A personality. And whenever he was under pressure from the business, sometimes he took it out on my poor mother. And when I was a young child, I, I, I couldn't do anything. Because, you know, you, you go in there and you get beat. <laughs> but I knew how to pray. Amen. And when I would hear daddy raging, sometimes I'd just slip away to my prayer chamber go into that secret place and begin to pray the peace of God over our household. And I watched God time after time after time bring a raging bull down into a peaceful lamb. I'm just telling you, I know that God answers the prayers of children. God answers the prayers of children. God answers their sincere prayers of children. When children cry out, I don't know whether anybody else has any testimony of where as, as a child or sometimes God will speak to you through your own children but just through children. And I want you to see what was happening here in Genesis chapter 21, verse 15 through 19. This is when Hagar was running away from Sarah and she was taking her child Ishmael and they were going and they'd run out of water and they were in the desert about to die. And when the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade of a bush and then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away because it hurts a mother to watch her child suffer and die. And when you got a mother who's done everything that she knows how to do to try to feed her child and then she can't feed him the pain that she feels. And she said, I don't want to watch the boy die, she said as she burst into tears. But God heard the boy crying. Not even just the mother. God heard the boy crying. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him, for I will make a great nation from his descendants. And then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. She was crying so much that her tears blinded her from the well of water to provide her. You can become so blinded by grief that you cannot even see your provision. 
And this is why you have to be careful whenever you, you cry too much because your grief can blind you to the provisions that God has already put in front of you. And I just want to remind you, God sees us and hears us. God sees us and hears us. For anybody who is doubting, and I know that this is a word from God. I heard from God. This is a word from God. God says, I, I hear you and I see you. I hear you and I see you. I want you to notice in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. And his ears are open to their prayers, but the Lord turns his face, to, face against those who do evil. And this verse is based on Psalm 34, 15, which simply says that the eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. I want you to see here, the eyes of God are on you. God sees you, and he hears you. His ears are open to your prayers. God's eyes are on you, and his ears are open to you. He sees you, and he hears you. And one of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah 29, 11. You've heard it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But then this is what I love in verse 12. Don't stop at verse 11 because the power of it is in verse 12 and 13. He says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. God says, I'm going to hear you if you'll come to me and pray. And he says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with a little bit of your heart. With all of your heart. With all of your heart. He says, you're going to find me when you come with all of your heart. With all of your heart. God says, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. When you call on me and come to me and pray to me, God says, I will listen to you. God hears. God hears. God hears. And whenever the Bible says God hears or God heard, it is synonymous without exception with God answered. Whenever God hears, it means that he answers. Whenever God hears, it means that he answers. Whenever God hears, it means that he answers. When he hears, he answers. He does not ignore. He answers. He answers. He answers. But so oftentimes, the prophetic promises of God that he gives us in Scripture are what we call contingent promises. The vast majority of the promises of Scripture are contingent, which means that there is an if-then situation, that if you'll do this, then that. If you are willing and obedient, then you shall eat the good of the land. If, if, then, if, if you, if you keep my words, then this will happen. You see, he says, if you ask anything in my name, then this will, this will, is what will ensue after that. If, if, then, one of the most uh, quoted if, then clauses is in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. He's given us a formula here. Yeah. But I, I want you to see that just based on this verse alone, that in order for God to hear us, we must have humility. In order for God to hear us, we must have honesty in communication. You can't come to God lying in prayer because he knows the real deal. You must have a hunger for a personal relationship with God. And you must have a heart for holiness. So you got to want to do right. You, you can't come to God with requests and then you refuse to turn from your wicked ways. Because God doesn't bless mess. You don't want God to bless you in your mess. Because it becomes a way of condoning and, and saying that you don't have to change. No. God loves us, but he loves us too much to leave us as we are. Yes, he loves you just as you are. But love grows. Love matures. Love corrects. Love disciplines. Love does a lot of different things. Love doesn't just leave you the same way that you are. When you love somebody, you help them to grow. Because a parent loves their child, they help them to grow. And I want you to know that God never ignores a desperate prayer. God never ignores a desperate prayer. God responds to desperate prayer. I mean the kind of prayer that makes you seem like you are intoxicated. That's what happened with Hannah when she prayed. Notice 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 12 through 18. Notice, as she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. And notice this, seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound, he thought she had been drinking. This is called subvocalization. It means that she was praying in her heart. 
She was praying in her heart. So her mouth moved, but there was no sound that came out. Now listen, we have to learn the art of this. Don't just start praying out loud all the time. You, you have to learn how to pray in your heart. Uh, I, I've watched people. I, I watched a, 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 one lady in, in the church many years ago. She brought her husband to me. And, and she says, she said, my husband is full of demons. And he's standing right there with her. And I'm trying to, shh. And she's throwing him under the bus. I mean, I felt, I felt badly for him. And, and in fact, when she stepped off, I, I put my arms around the man. I said, I'm so sorry that you have to live with that. <laughs> but she called the man a demon, you know, Satan. She just looked at him. She said, Satan, get behind me. I'm like, sweetheart, do you realize the man can see you and hear you? <laughs> this is a great opportunity to use sub-vocalization. Pray in your heart. Pray in your heart. Listen, on your job, if you want to keep your job, pray in your heart. Pray in your heart. Pray. Somebody says something stupid to you. They, I mean, you're already tired and they ask you, can you work overtime? And you're already tired. Your feet are already hurting. You're hungry. And somebody asks you, can you, you know, pray... Uh, work overtime. Just go in the heart. It's time to do that heart prayer. It's time to do that heart praying. You know, you're on the telephone with them. It's the time to use sub vocalization. Pray in your heart. Learn the art of praying in your heart with your boss, with your spouse, with your children. Learn how to pray in your heart. God can hear heart prayers. He can hear heart prayers. Now notice, let's go back to the story here of Hannah, how seeing her, verse 13, seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound, he thought she had been drinking. And so Eli said, must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. She said, oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I'm a wicked woman, for I've been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. It means she was desperate. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you've asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. And then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. That means when this man gave her that word to say that this thing that she'd been praying about had been granted, she had no sign that it had been granted. But immediately, she thanked him as though she'd received something, because she had. And even though there was no external change in anything right at that moment that she could see or perceive in any way, she thanked him for it. If you believe that you received something from God, thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. You thank him for it. And sure enough, nine months later, she had a baby. The word of the Lord was true. God heard her. After all of those years of barrenness, all of those years of barrenness, God heard her. I want you to notice what the Bible says in St. John 9, 31. It says, now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. Now notice this. We know that there is one prayer of a sinner that, that God hears. It's when he, a sinner is praying and asking for repentance. Asking for forgiveness for his sins. Otherwise, how would a sinner get saved if God hears not sinners? When he says that God hears not sinners, he's talking about that selfish way that sinners have a tendency to pray. When you pray asking God for material things and nothing of your spiritual growth and development. When you're not asking God for a closer walk to him to get to know him. You're only seeking his hand. You're never seeking his face nor his heart. And that's the kind of prayer that God says, I don't even fool with that. Says, don't, don't talk to me. Don't, don't, don't. Let, let, me, let me help you to understand this. You know how it feels when people only call you when they need money. Then I call in to see how, how you're doing, whether, you, whether your medication is working, whether you... <laughs> the only time they call you, you know they want something. And, and they, might, they might open with salutation, like, hey, child, how you doing? I ain't talked to you in a long time. And you know before they get off the telephone, they're going to they're gonna swoop around, come all the way around the mountain, but you know at the end of the day, they're going to ask you for something. You know that. How does that make you feel? And, and see, it doesn't make God feel good either. And so God says, I don't even fool with prayers like that. People who don't want me for me. 
who just coming to me for a selfish carnal desire. You know, God bless me with this house, bless me with this job, bless me with this man, bless me with this woman, bless me, you know, bless me to be able to have children, bless my loan to get approved, Lord, bless me to get promoted on my job. See, that's the way sinners pray. They, they pray for stuff, status symbols. They pray for money in their bank account. They just pray for stuff without any kind of heart relationship. And God says, listen, I want to deal with folks. He says, I, I, we know God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. He hears him. But I don't want you to allow the mistakes of your past to disqualify you from God's amazing grace in your life. Because I want you to realize this. Failures and mistakes are normal to life. Anybody who's never failed has never done anything. Anybody who's never made a mistake has never done anything, and that's a mistake itself. Let me give you just a few facts about mistakes. Number one, doers make mistakes. If you're going to do things, you're going to make mistakes. There are no perfect parents. There are no perfect husbands. There are no perfect wives because we're human. We make mistakes. Doers make mistakes. Number two, the second time you make the same mistake is a choice. Number three, the best teacher is your last mistake. Number four, smart doers make original mistakes. Number five, mistakes become failures when you begin finger pointing and you won't accept responsibility. Number six, avoiding mistakes stunts growth. And number seven, mistakes posture you for God's grace. If you never made a mistake, you never need the grace of God. But I want you to notice how the psalmist prayed in Psalm 66, verse 17 through 20. Notice this. The psalmist says, I cried out to him for help, praising him as I spoke, praising him as I spoke. And notice this in verse 18. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. See, that's why God hears not the prayer of a sinner. He does not. God hears not sinners because they have to confess the sin, and then God will listen. Then God will hear. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. Praise God who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his unfailing love from me. You see, when we worship God in spirit and in truth and we do God's will, he hears us. He hears us. Notice 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. Confidence. Confidence. Say confidence. confidence. Comes from the word confideo. It means with faith. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that he hears us. Whenever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. I mean, when you're walking in God's will, when you're worshiping him, when you've confessed your sin, you know, God hears. God hears. Even though we're not perfect, God hears us. He hears us even in our imperfection. He hears us even if you're in the wrong place. You can get in a club and realize, you know, God, I have no business here. God, forgive me for even being here. Forgive me for what I'm doing right now. Oh, God, forgive me. You, you know that God can hear you in a club. God can hear you in the worst of situation. He heard Hagar. In the desert, when she and her son Ishmael were about to die, he heard them. He heard Moses at the Red Sea when he'd come to the end of the road and there was an army behind them, a wilderness on one hand and a desert on the other and a Red Sea in front of them. God heard Moses. He heard Hannah praying in the temple. He heard uh, Daniel praying in the lion's den. He heard Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. I mean, he heard Paul when he prayed at midnight on lockdown and God came and shook the prison. And everybody's bands were loosed and the doors flung open. He heard Jesus while he was praying. Uh, and, and there were great drops of blood that came out. He prayed until he was bleeding in the garden of Gethsemane. But he heard him. I mean, the, the, the psalmist said in Psalm 139, he says, where can I flee from your presence? Where can I go on this planet? If I go to hell, he says, even uh, there, he says, God, you'll meet me. If I take wings and of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your right hand lead me and you'll guide me. I mean, you, it, it was God's way of saying that I'm, I'm ubiquitous. I'm omnipresent. There's no place that you can go that I'm not already there. 
And so he says, wherever you are, if you're in an automobile and about to have an accident and you don't have time to say, thou who sittest high and looks low, but all you have time enough to do is to call out the name Jesus. When you're in a, I mean, he's, he knows, he knows, he hears. God will hear you. Even when you don't have but a moment of time, God will hear you when you're in the, in the place of where you, you're hanging in the balance between life and death. God will hear you between confusion and doubt and, and belief. He, he knows how to just come right into the midst of your depression and he will hear you. God will come into your sorrow and hear you. He'll come into your grief and hear you. He'll come into your jubilation and hear you. God knows how to reach you wherever you are. There's no place on the earth that you can get out of God's reach. There's no den, there's no crack house where God doesn't go by his spirit and still redeem people. God is still moving. He'll find you in solitary confinement in a prison and baptize a person in the Holy Ghost. God is still able. There's no place that we can go that we can get out of the reach of God because the arm of the Lord is not shortened that it cannot save. He's still a great savior. He's still a great deliverer. God still hears. He still hears. And then I want you to notice this scripture in Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. Don't ever forget it. Let your hope make you glad. Be patient in time of trouble and never stop praying. Be patient in time of trouble and never stop praying. Sometimes the devil make you feel stupid for praying because he's like, you've been praying all this long time and look at your situation, it hasn't gotten any better. Be patient in time of trouble and never stop praying. Be patient in the time of trouble and never stop praying. Be patient in the time of trouble and never stop praying. Be patient in time of trouble and never stop praying. Then he tells us another way. He said, pray without ceasing, didn't he? Pray without ceasing. You see, and the devil, the minute that you get ready to pray, guess what happens? He makes you sleepy. The minute that you get ready to pray, guess what happens? An interruption. Your phone goes off. I mean, the minute that you get ready to pray, wandering thoughts come to your mind. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's a reason that the devil fights you when you try to pray. Making you sleepy, making your thoughts go all over the place, having people to interrupt you. He's trying to disrupt what he knows is the mitochondria of the Christian life. He's trying to stop you from being able to tap into that power that's able to activate miracles in the earth realm. Because he knows that wherever you are, when you begin to pray, that becomes your SOS signal toward heaven. You got a red telephone to come into your real superhero who is the power of the supernatural. We don't need a superhero if we got a supernatural God. And I'm just telling you, we've got a God with all power in his hands. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. And I declare to you that when you call him, when you call him, there are times that God knows how to answer even before you call. He knows what things you have need of even before you ask. But he said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find not and the door shall be open unto you. And it's time that God wants to open some things. Don't lose your hope. You keep on praying. You keep on praying. Be constant in season and out of season. Don't let the devil talk you out of prayer, making you think that your prayer is not making any difference. He doesn't see that God is working on deliverance. And he doesn't know how you're keeping the hand of the enemy and keeping the hand of death from happening in the lives of your family members that God's got you. God's got you. It is your way of saying, I'm trusting in somebody greater than where I am and who I am. This thing, immediately when it's praying, it, it's an acknowledgement that there's greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that I'm able to ask or think it as according to to the power that works on the inside of you and I'm glad today that no matter what you're dealing with and sometimes you've been praying and you've been wondering God why is it taking so long and I've asked you for this and this has not happened but God hears God hears you God hears you he's seen you every time that you've cried all alone when you thought that you had to be strong for everybody else and God sees you he sees you he sees you he sees when a mother has been working two jobs trying to make ends meet to keep food on the table and she feels like Hagar, hating to see that I can't even provide for my children like I want to, and it hurts and breaks her heart. And little does she know that she's so dear and precious to God that God would take her tears and put them in a bottle and said, I'm going to keep record of this, but this is my child, and I feel them, and I hurt what they hurt. 
and I've got their child. I've got their Ishmael that they've given birth to. And I'm going to bless Ishmael. Even when you've written Ishmael off, God says, I got a destiny for Ishmael. For people whose identity and they feel like throwaway children. God says, I've got a, I got a destiny for the misfits in life. I got a destiny for folks that don't fit into the normal behaviors and the normal classification. God says, I got a place for them. And I want to be able to come in and to do something with folks where they don't know how to control their behavior. They don't understand how they learn, but God says, I've got a place for them. And if you'll bring me your Ishmael, I'll open you up and show you a, a watering place, a place to be able to refresh your soul. If you'll trust me, if you'll trust me, if you'll trust me, he says, I, I hear the cries of the child. I hear the cries of the child. I just want you to know today, God hears God sees he hears your prayers keep on praying while you're in trouble don't let anything stop you because God hears thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.